just graduated, and uh, when I graduated, I was really sad because I was telling everybody, like, oh, I'm not a student anymore. Like, what do I call myself? And they're like, Maria, you're an artist now. <laughs> you can say you're an artist, and I still feel weird about that. Like, that even when you get, like, this kind of credential that's sort of the... It's not a necessary credential by any means, but it it's helpful in, in claiming some legitimacy as an actual artist if you say you have an MFA from somewhere. Um, it still feels weird to me to say that as, like, a like a job title or something. Cause like maybe part of it is that it has so many different connotations and it's uncertain whether people will take you seriously or not if you say that. And also I think sometimes it sounds pretentious when people say it and uh, like it's an excuse to be weird or <laughs> try to sound different or exotic or something. So like I liked the, uh, the title of student a lot better. And I kind of think like, I don't know, I'm much more comfortable in an academic environment thinking of, about myself as someone who is there to learn stuff, not someone who is supposed to know what they're doing yet. And when you say that you have like a title, it, you know, it seems like you're supposed to know what you're doing. And I, I would much rather just be continuing to figure things out indefinitely. When I wasn't looking, but then it became something I actively think about, like what repetition does. I think repetition as a strategy is interesting because when you have a bunch of objects, a bunch of different things, um, when people try to make sense of it, one way that they figure out what's going on is they look for repetition. And it's like, oh, that happened twice, so that's important. And it's a way of cluing people into what's important without directly telling them what's important. Um, so I think about that as a strategy a lot. And then I think about like how things become more anonymous or creepy or funny when there's a whole bunch of them versus one and how you have to interact with it differently. Like I remember specifically there was this time when I was at a... My parents were thinking about building or buying this farmhouse, and so we were like kind of wandering around and playing outside and looking at these, looking at all the weathered wood and stuff. And I turned over this like this piece of wood, and there's like a couple of little um, Japanese beetles on there, like lady beetles. And I'm like, oh, how cute! Lady beetles are so cute. And I look up the wall, and there's like, oh, there's like six more. Oh my gosh, there's like 400 more. <laughs> and then there's like a thousand all over, and they're just crawling everywhere. And they very quickly went from being like, oh, what a charming little thing, to, oh my god, they're going to take over the world, and I'm really scared of these things. And that, I think that can happen with like anything. Like, like, I think I was talking to a professor at Critique one time, and I was like, at what point do you think that, like, what number of puppies would you have to reach before they went from being like totally cute to being like, oh my god, there's too many puppies. Like, I think with puppies, it's really a lot of puppies. But like, <laughs> other animals, it's not very many and people get really weirded out and afraid of them and it's like what is it about them is it their scale is it their you know because like mice for instance I mean they're small and they're fast and people tend to hate them but they are also like furry and kind of cuddly and cute as compared to like cockroaches or you know lady beetles or something so it's like I don't know that's kind of an interesting thing that happens that is fun to 